how it's now faring. Um, we are up by just over 1%, 3,545. Let's get to David Molnar, Partner and Managing Director at High Tower San Diego. AUM 550 Mill, he joins us live from San Diego. David, really good to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, look, what are you focused Thank on you. when it comes to these markets? We are now seeing the uh, exposure mainly to China, but also from Greece, um, impacting the US markets overall, impacting global markets, in fact, when you look at commodities, currencies, also equities themselves. How much attention are you paying when it comes to your investment strategy to what is happening in China right now? Well, uh, thank you, Oriel. I mean, in the short run, we have to look at those two issues that you brought up. It's all about China and Greece right now in the marketplace. That's where the risk is coming from, and that's what the markets are focused on, and that's what we're seeing with asset prices. You just mentioned commodities have been taking it really hard the last couple of days. Uh, equities down across the board, and of course, you know, the problems that you were talking about in China and the stock market there, those are the top of line issues that everyone's focused on. I mean, in the longer run, these issues will get resolved and fundamentally markets will continue to grow. But, you know, I think right now we're focused on, on those events and Greece is really our, you know, front and center. Um, I think there's probably two to 5% in the market on either direction based on the binary outcome of will they come to some kind of a compromise or will they move towards a Grexit? So that, those are the things that we're really thinking about right now. Okay, if that, if that is the case, then you're almost uh, sitting on the fence right now when it comes to trading strategy, David, because if you're watching the China market, you know about all of the volatility that's happening there. Yes, this morning we have now turned into the green, uh, which is a surprising but a good surprise, I think, right. for long investors out there in the market. How do you trade this? How do you protect yourself from this? Well, I mean, I think there's two two ways we have to look at it. You know, if you're an investor in the Chinese market right now and you've just gone through this roller coaster, first of all, you got to step back, and hopefully you have some perspective that the market there has run up about 150 percent in the last year. And yeah, we've given back about 30, but we're just back to where we were in March. So unless you bought in a month ago when the market peaked, you're probably okay in terms of your your exposure. But now with this kind of risk and volatility you'd have to ask yourself, is this really where I want to be? And maybe you need to think about paring back your exposure on the next major bounce. I mean, what we've seen there now, I think there's 24 different actions that the th authorities there have taken to try to support the market and arrest the decline. So it's pretty substantial. I mean, just read a report on the way over here that, you know, they're talking about having the uh, PBOC buy stocks to support the Chinese market, which I think would be a terrible idea in the long run because I think it's just going to sap confidence in that market. Market. But, you know, it may support things in the short run and cause a bounce and give people a chance to get out. So you have that. The flip side of that is you have investors where we manage in the U.S., you know, where we have very little exposure right now overseas. So we're watching it to the effect that it impacts our investments domestically, but we don't have that much exposure directly in, in China specifically. So I'd say 1% uh, across the board is our max. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. David, looking at some of your uh, uh, trading strategies right now, you're actually looking into some of the washed out sectors like utilities, REITs, uh, MLPs. Uh, you're talking about the impact right. from the federal rate raising cycle and, and expectations when it comes to that. I thought it was interesting that in the minutes overnight, the Fed specifically pointed to these issues that we've just been referring to, especially China and Greece. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to see the Fed look at China and Greece and see, you know, what, what kind of an effect that may have. I mean, I, I think that this thing persists and we don't get to resolution in the near future in a positive manner, then it's probably going to delay ultimately the Fed's rate increases. So, so I'm looking at that, you know, back to the sectors, you know, I think that those, those areas you mentioned, utilities, REITs, interest rate sensitive vehicles that have been selling off hard based on fears that rates are going to rise. And now that we're maybe thinking they're not going to rise so quickly uh, and we have these global concerns and maybe some slowdowns that there's opportunity here in these sectors that have sold off 15 percent from their peaks they're good assets good quality cash flows so we like to wait in there everybody hates them right now that's what we're looking for okay all right good stuff david we appreciate your time yeah. today thank you so much for joining us yeah thank you Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Go grab a cup of coffee. Uh, in the meantime, let's just have a quick look at the mystery.